And so now we lubricate our bolts, especially the bolts on the side, so they don't break. And over here, <laughs> very realistic, right? Yeah. We already we already did this. off without knocking it off of there all right so what we did we took this multi-link bolt off here this, two of them uh, two of them one here and one there okay one here one there then we swing this out remove the uh, axle you gotta kind of pop it out a little bit because of the circlip the so old we use this good old pickle fork here we use yep. for everything and um, we got the axle out it was all it was pretty easy now we're low into diff down uh, supported by a jack we're going to change into the torque locker with the uh, diff still on the car and the other axles pop loose so we lower this down we can pull the other axle out too if you just can roll this way so we can pop the axle out, that's really all we need I see the okay there we go nice Getting this one bolt off that they the breather's slightly in the way of this. I think with this thinner wall socket, I can just get it off. Well, that's kind of weird. That's how mine is, too. It's stupid. There it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I'm just going to leave that there for the moment. Alright, so there's your 3.9. And yeah, the ring gear still definitely got to come off to get that cross pin. That leaving the diff on the car is not that helpful right now for us. No, uh, I don't think it really helps. It's just one less thing to take apart. But in this, in, in this, at this point, you only really saves you is taking off the four drive shaft bolts. Since we gotta take this thing out anyway, they'll take this all the way out and just stick it in the vise to get the ring gear bolts off. Okay. Yeah, these are all coming off nice and easy. Yeah. Purposely using just the ratchet though instead of the uh, impact just to make sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh did that stuff break. Your diff is quite a bit older than this one, say a 98. What you might find is that there's a significant amount of rust around these five bolts. It actually swelled up enough that they cracked the corners off of this uh, bearing carrier here. It came. Shit, we want to it came, hands. bro. Yes. Which is not the worst part. The worst part is that they've also um, seized into the uh, housing and, uh, you know, f and uh, they break off when you try to take them off. Oh, this one doesn't feel too good. Uh, it looked like it would move in there for a second. Yeah, well, they, uh, this yeah, one moved right before it broke, too. Definitely. definitely. They're just, well, it just wasn't happening. But the good thing is that they snapped off at the surface of the um, carrier. So once you got the bearing carrier out of there, there was a stud you could grab on. And with a uh, liberal application of blowtorch <laughs> to the housing, and uh, now that all the rubbery parts are out of the way, because all the rubbery parts are attached to the carrier, and um, some vice grips, this remaining uh, remainders of the bolts came out without too much additional grief. So. I'll also say that um, this one right here at the top, on this side, I couldn't really reach with the PB blaster beforehand, and it was a lot harder to get off than the rest of them. So, if you uh, can, go out and lubricate in advance, especially if you have rust under your car. All right, we're taking the, uh, there we go. It's vertical, right, so that you can walk the one end of this hole, and then you can just kind of, just have just enough clearance to get the ring gear past there. And then we have a naked skeleton dip. All right, well, I was around. We'll so just uh, zip the uh, ring gear bolts off.
just try to bait it good. So now before all this start stuff starts falling apart. So let's pop this out. Alright, so keeping track of these. Alright, so those are the top. Bottom. I don't know how you want to keep track of these things in the long run, but Bottom. You say top. Top is the side with the pin tension pin. Yeah. Maybe you want to you know, mark it. We can mark, mark the, the box. box yeah. yeah, and then you can maybe take a picture. Alright. So there's the ring gears. Here's our little system right there to not get anything mixed up. And we do note some light polish marks on these, which the manual warns you about, but I feel like this is inevitable, right? Because the rest of the pin has some sort of coating on it, and that coating is not going to stick around if you've got a gear riding on it, so I don't polish. really feel like that's a problem, yeah. Just see that stringy there? Yeah. Grab your locker. Per the recommendations, we'll use a little assembly grease on these. So there is, these are the same power number, right? So there is no left or right for these. So we're going to reuse our thrust washers, keeping them on the same side. So I guess we don't have to worry about mixing those up because they're going to go back in. And so we'll keep them on in the same uh, orientation either. So that came off the gear that way. We'll put it on the gear the same way. Slide that in there. We'll do the same thing with this. that in there. Alright. I'll go ahead and put a little bit of assembly grease on these which will help hold them in place. This is assembly lube. It comes out like honey. And green. one of these in here. We'll go ahead and drop this in, minding the orientation of these two pins. Uh, line up with the two pin holes. There we go, rotate that a little bit. Now we just gotta rotate these around and pop the springs in and that's it. Helps if you have a buddy, but you can do it by yourself too. Your masochist. Masturbus? that. Masturbus, whatever that is. Don't act like you don't know. What? Don't act like you don't know. A masturbist? Yeah. No. Here we need to it one more time. Oh boy. A masturbist did it all up. Oh boy, that is. <laughs> That's the secret. When you lose a spring, watch. The, always keep your eyes on the spring when it goes shooting off. I got this one loaded up. Okay. Flat head on it and press. Let go and voila. You give a little press just to make sure it's seated. You can see there's about a millimeter of overlap on the end that keeps those from flying out under centrifugal force. There we go. We really provide you these little pockets that the needle nose vice grips kind of fit right in, honestly. All right. Now, oh, can't forget the tension pin. Make sure your flats are, I guess, parallel to the uh, mounting surface for the ring gear. Otherwise your tension pin will not go through. Just trying to avoid smacking your bearings, which I think would be inadvisable, so I'm gonna use this. There we go. Now. So what I'm doing right here is I'm carefully wiping down. This is kind of a more important step, I think, even than marking it. The mating surface. We're going to have a mating ritual between 
the carrier assembly and the ring gear. You don't want any dirt in there. Bugs or grime. Grip between your males and female parts. Make sure you try to line these bolts up as best as possible because it's kind of hard to rotate it once it starts to go on there. Here, can we get a bolt That's started good. in there? Yep. Before, we, before this thing rotates. I suppose if we want to get the torque accurate, maybe we should clean these bolts off real quick and clean those holes out. We'll get two started and then we'll do the other ones and then we'll take those two back and clean the holes out. And you do this if you want to be properly anal retentive. Because the, I, any torque spec you get in a service manual, unless otherwise specified, should be assumed to be a dry. Lubricated versus a dry torque spec is huge. Lining these up, even. Yeah, so you're at risk for over torquing it if you don't. Yeah, you'll have more clamping force than expected if you put these things on wet. There we go. I actually never really took much credence to uh, dry torque specs, but it's a very good point for an application like this. I would say it's a good call. Anything that has the uh, you know, being balanced and it's critical like this. It's something where it's not easy to get back in and check them too, you know. It's not like your lug nuts where it's really easy just to put the torque wrench on a little bit later and check them. Yeah, yeah it's pretty low cost if you're looking towards something and you're still the lug nuts. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, you can even drive around on four for a minute. You don't want to skimp on your ring gear bolts. Guys, it's 76 foot pounds. I'm not going to give you any more torque specs. You should look it up. I mean, we could give them more torque specs. We're looking off. Why not give it to them? I guess so. But it might be good. That's our result. True. Honestly, probably not, though. Probably not. The service manual doesn't seem to have changed between my 98 Forester and your uh, 2011 Rex, so. We might give you some torque specs, but I wouldn't suggest you rely on them. You should look it up. Your mileage may vary, use at your own risk, all that kind of bullshit. Alright, that's all of them. It's definitely a lot easier than the bullshit we did on my car. Last one. There probably was, yeah. Oh, yeah. thank God. I, I do like a star pattern, and then I go around. Okay. Circle. That's my, that's my procedure. Double checking. And of course, there's no good like crisscross pattern to do when you have an even number, right? It's yeah. always nice on uh, a five bolt because you can go just skip one, you know, go two, 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 two. Oh, dude, we didn't do it before this. And circlips. Oh, shit. Nice. Okay. Hard to get in now, too. Right. <laughs> This is extracting a circlip, trying not to bend it too much. The more you bend it, the more you'll create problems for yourself when you're putting everything back together. Which is why I'm using this one to kind of, once I got it started, walk it back this way to ease the tension as much as I can. Oh, look, it didn't pop off your Yeah. yeah. Alright, so, All right, so we push this little circlip in there. You can see it down in there. And now we're taking this here and we're going to bend it out, which is like a little more difficult because I can't quite get to it. As an alternative, you might consider installing these circlips into the locker. There we go. Locker before you put the locker into the differential carrier. But we forgot, so we're doing this. You don't want to drive the ring past the little divot, so I'm going to hold that and prevent it from going while he kind of taps on the edge. Look, we're in. Hmm. All right. You jam that socket in there? Yeah. So what we're doing here is trying to stretch that circlip back out because we think we collapsed it just a little bit. We probably only did like very little just now, but. Every little bit's gonna count. You might be able to see that. 
Right, okay, so what do we do? All right, so here's all the parts in there. There's parts in there. We remembered the um, the thrust washers on either side. Tyler, Tyler and I were talking about this, whether these washers should go back in, but there's really no way that makes sense because this is like a cylindrical surface and these are hemispherical. So check, those are not in. We think that's right. Um, instructions aren't really clear. Springs are fully seated behind the little lip there. There is a lip. We were discussing this the other day. There's a little, oh, there is actually, about a one millimeter lip oh, that retains yeah, those springs. That. So the so springs that's... are well retained so they won't fly out under centrifugal force. Um, uh, we Tension pin is seated and ring bolts, we torqued them. We torqued them in the uh, vise this time instead of piling on top of each other to hold the diff down while we tried to crank them while it was in the case. These are torqued. Differential is back in. We just got to seat the axles, put those couple bolts for the multi link back in, and then reattach the exhaust, and we're done. Nice. One evening after work. I don't think so. I feel like the angle's a little harder on here. It's harder to fill for some reason. <laughs> so bad. Isn't it? I mean, yeah, we're all supposed to be mature. <laughs> yeah, this isn't right. Mastering. Yeah, I feel it already. Brewing. Except for no, because no, we're not sponsored by anyone, except for I guess kind of torque masters now. Only by marketing Yeah, only by marketing Maybe if a beer company wants to sponsor us, that would be cool. I mean, all they have to do is give us free beer. I mean, I mean, we did drink beer in the morning. That's it, very good. <laughs> I thought it was a good one. I mean, that is my favorite kind of beer. I mean, we're not expensive. It's free no. beer. 